What did that sign say at the ranger station? May the peace of the wilderness be with you. We've gone about a tenth of a mile on this trail, and it's already so much more peaceful being thousands of feet above Palm Springs, California. We are out for a hike at San Jacinto State Park in California, and two things about this hike so far. One, I think this is the first time we've hiked together in California. Yes. Yes. This is the first time we've been together in California. <laughs> and it's the first hiking trail I've ever gotten to where you had to take a, an aerial tramway to get up here. That was really cool. But yes, it is a about 10, 15 minute tram ride from 2,000 feet elevation to 8,000 feet elevation, give or take a little bit. And then once you're up here, it's just gorgeous. It's, it's gorgeous, it's quiet, and it's much cooler. We are camping down in Desert Hot Springs, which is just outside of Palm Springs, California. When we left the uh, trailer this afternoon, it was, I believe, 107 outside in the shade. <laughs> and it is only 70 degrees up here. So much nicer, much cooler, and much more enjoyable of an experience. You said something about big bark? Yes, the bark, not only are these trees, trees huge, but the bark itself is huge. I don't even know how to explain it. It's like thick and big and it's just scraggly and really cool. We set out for a hike on the Round Valley Loop Trail, which is about a four mile hike. And because it's us, we found a way to turn it into a five mile hike. Right, <laughs> because we decided to take a spur to visit this old ranger station behind us, which was what, about another quarter to a half a mile-ish? I think it, add, well, yeah, it adds about <laughs> half a mile, maybe it's 0.3, then you got to go back. I don't know. Our four mile hike's probably going to be five miles by the time we're done. But it was kind of neat to come out here. It's a seasonal ranger station now. So apparently there are rangers out here occasionally, but it's historic. That's it's there's not much here to this building. No, what it really is, is for the backcountry campers out here. You come to this point, you write your name and date of your um, camping overnight experience here on the board so that they know whether you're in or out. And then and you've claimed your campsite. And there is water here if you have to filter it, but there's a stream that you can get water in. So it's basically just serving for the overnight backpackers at this point. Round Valley Loop has been a neat trail so far. We're Once we get back from the spur, we're about halfway now. Um, it follows a series of different trails, actually. Yes. It, let me consult the map. <laughs> starting at the original... Yeah, starting at the original ranger station at the tram station we took willow creek trail to high trail and then once we get back to the intersection we will be on the round valley trail which will complete the loop back to the aerial tram station yeah 
and it takes you um, by Round Valley Meadow, so which is kind of neat, and is actually very green right now. And you talked to somebody last night at the campground that said they had a very wet winter, so it's the greenest he's seen things around here in a while. Yes, not just even up in the mountain, but everywhere in the Coachella Valley, but specifically up here because they've had a lot of do they get snow up here? I don't even know. Yes. Must be. <laughs> yes. Me. yes, they do. At this elevation. Some of the, tr- this is, we're at 9,000, 9,100 feet, according to the sign. And I remembered reading when I was um, researching trails that many of them do not even open until May or June because of the snowfall. Yeah. So yes, I know there's snow. Yeah. So there's been plenty of runoff and that's good to see because we could use the water. Yeah. Despite the fact that down below we're in a desert and there's no snow, there's snow up here. <laughs> it's all about elevation. Because this is a loop trail, you can take it in either direction. We ended up going clockwise after talking to the ranger. And he said, do you want to go on the steep stuff at the beginning and go up? Or do you want to do it at the end while you're coming down? And we decided to start out with the steep stuff going up. But you're higher up on the mountainside kind of over there. And it's more like sections of solid rock. And then there's trail with dirt and gravel. And it is steeper in parts. But Jesse and I both commented that coming down on this side now, the second half of the trail, it seems more technical. There's more big rocks and roots and things to watch your footing on. And I guess if I had to make a recommendation, I'd liked doing the clockwise way that we did it. Because if we were taking this in the opposite direction right now, a lot of what we have been climbing down would seem like big stairs going up. And we all know how much Jesse loves stairs. Stairs are the devil. <laughs> so you could do it either way. It's a loop. I liked clockwise so far. And I think I'm going to stick with that, assuming I don't trip and fall while trying to shoot this video. Especially okay. since you warned me not to. Walk and talks on technical sections are not recommended. Because apparently you haven't hiked enough. You just turned around and went back up the trail to test what it would have been like if we had gone up this trail and gone counterclockwise. Well, you need to, you know, have your hypothesis and your, all of those words that I learned in seventh grade science class, your theory, your hypothesis, your testing. Anyways, we had to make sure that what we were saying seemed accurate. So I decided to test it out. Anyway... It still stands that I would prefer to go this way. However, I will say going up definitely feels like stairs, but you have to watch your footing less because you're going up. Coming down, each step you take down, you have to watch that you're, the gravel isn't going to come out from under you and you're going to slip and fall because it is some kind of steep, I wouldn't say steep, but technical climbing over the rocks and down. So either way, I suppose, it's going to be challenging in one way or the other. However, I don't know. I guess we're still considering our clockwise loop to be the better option at this point in time. So, whatever. Kudos to you for taking extra steps to test. Right, I went up and I went. I've just for you. I went up and down <laughs> to test the theory out. We still have a little bit of hiking to do. More like walking. We can see the ranger station. So we are back to the beginning, and it was about five miles. Two and a half hours, which is that's pretty typical for us. And we obviously we stopped and enjoyed the scenery a little bit and did some video and enjoyed the really tall trees and the really big boulders. You do feel very tiny when you're on this trail out here. Um, yeah, and you want to take as much time as you can and 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 spend your time up here because it's not cheap to get up here. <laughs> that's that's the one thing is the tram that you have to take to get up here is thirty dollars a person for a ticket. Plus, you have to pay fifteen dollars for parking, so racket. It's it's you know seventy five bucks to get up to this mountain and up to the state park. So you can do these trails or you do the overnight camping, whatever you're gonna do if you're if you're doing backcountry stuff. But once you get up here, spend some time and make the most of it. I do believe you can get passes and like an annual or seasonal pass. So if you lived in the area, you knew you were going to be here for a while, that would be uh, the ben- you know that would be the financial smart decision to do is to get that pass. Obviously, we're only here for a couple of days. We're just doing this. Either way, I think we were going to come up and do the tram because everybody said that's the thing to do here in Palm Springs. I'm glad we did the hike as well. 
Um, but I think it is the most expensive state park that entrance fee we've ever had. <laughs> yeah, there's no fee to the park necessarily, but you have to pay to get up here. And the tram was cool. It's the only one they said in the world, I think, that does a 360 degree turn as you're going up and down. So you get that view of no matter where you're standing, you're going to get a view. You just have to remember the floor moves. You kept yeah. having that problem. <laughs> because you'd hang on to the railing to look out the window. But the railing doesn't move. So the railing's going and you're going like this. <laughs> and your hand is staying behind. <laughs> so so we've got a little bit of time here yet at the end of the day. The tram station and everything is still open. So we're going to go check out some of the history of that. And we'll try to add that to this video if we can find something interesting out. But yeah, this was a really fun hike. It was, it was really pretty back in there. I enjoyed it. It was nice to get away from all the people down below. And the heat. And the I'm heat. just so glad that we got out of the 100 and... 5, 10, 15 that we've been in for the last two weeks and enjoyed. I mean, I've got long sleeves on and it's because it's chilly, not because I'm trying to protect myself from sun. So this is a nice place to come when it's really hot. Great spot to check out. We have made it back down the mountain and we're down here at the Valley Tram Station. There's a little room here with some history and pictures about the building of this. And it is a National Registered Historic Civil Engineering Landmark something, 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 because the way they constructed this is just crazy with uh, how they actually got all the supplies up the mountain. Well, most of it was done by helicopter, at least initially, and to build the towers. And there are actual little helipads on each of the towers. You can still see them, and they still use them for maintenance. But yeah, they were laying in these helicopters and these towers as they were hauling stuff up. Um, when they needed equipment up at the top of the mountain to build that station, uh, they were hauling tractors up in pieces via helicopter and then reassembling them at the top of the mountain. Uh, it's It was just an incredible feat to get this done. And there's just so many miles of cable run that they they had to do by helicopter, mule, foot, like any way they could get it up this mountain. And it was just crazy. So it's cool. It's what, yeah, but 1963, uh, they have changed the tram cars. So the original tram cars, um, I don't know what year they were discontinued, but the new ones are the rotating ones. Uh, so that's really cool. They run, you know, about every 15 to 20 minutes. And we... Uh, right now it's getting dark as you can see we stayed up for the sunset up at the top and up at the top at the mountain tram station there's a couple restaurants there's a fancy restaurant and then a cafeteria style restaurant you can you know just grab a bite to eat and hang out and, and watch the scenery up there there's some smaller trails so like we did a you know relatively big hike but if you're not up for that and you just want some cool views there's like a half mile or a mile and a half trail that you can do so there's quite a bit up there if you get to the top Overall, it's been a fun day. It was an afternoon, really, is what we spent. But experiencing the tram and getting to see the state park at the top, doing a beautiful hike. So if you get a chance, check out the Palm Springs Aerial Tramway. If you have a chance, get up there and do some hiking at the top of the mountain or even just take one of those little nature trails. It's really pretty up there. In the meantime, keep on trekking. And we'll see you out there.